tell your family you can be a commander. What's happening? What's happening, everybody? Everybody good? Everybody good? Actually, I'm tripping. I still got this as the Sunday. We got to change this to the post game. Yes, sir. Let's get to it, man. I know a lot of y'all are disappointed. We got to dive into it, man. That's what we got the call-in show for. For y'all to vent y'all frustrations. I prefer for it to be a celebration stream. But, of course, we got to get on everybody's heads after a performance like that. We got to get to it, man. We got... I mean, even the people that you could say play well overall, there's still a lot of negatives to take. I mean... Scoring three points at halftime, even though Sam Howe looked great overall, especially in the second half. But him and Eric Bieniemy got some explaining to do for that first half because I know the Bears was out there scoring like crazy, and that's the defense's fault. But if the offense is on point, the Bears score, we score. The Bears score, we score. So the offense still gets a lot of the blame, but, of course, the defense was the worst part. Um, I already spilled all of my thoughts and opinions, brought all kinds of advanced stats, even got a few pictures to show y'all, some illustrations and things. Um, that video's uploading to my computer right now. It's an hour, 15 minutes, 55 seconds. So basically an hour, 16 minute breakdown of everything that went wrong, but also some things that went well uh, for the commanders against the Bears. Um, whether we should fire Ron Rivera or Jack Del Rio or not. Um, why and why not points to both. Um, also did a whole breakdown like about the 2023 draft class and like I mean come on dog like what's going on with that I know we try to wait till like three five years down the line but that draft class is looking terrible right now but let me um I, again I did a whole hour 16 minute video um explaining how I felt about everything position group by position group I talk about all the coaches all the players everybody that played um so yeah you um y'all will hear that soon once it finally uploads to my computer then I'll start uploading it to YouTube that'll probably be in the middle of the stream um, but I'm trying to just go ahead and stream for like an hour, um, and then we'll see what happens. We got my boy Timothy already in the call, so let me go ahead and start bringing people on. But before that, let me say what's up to everybody. We got Amon in here. George was good. We got Cave. My boy Cave, welcome back. Johnny, welcome back. Yes, sir. We got a few people in here. Javier was good. Michael was happening. Door Gunner was good, everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure I miss anybody. Infamous 2K. Calvin was good. Waiting for a call and I forgot I had a wedding right now. Woo! Infamous. Come on, my boy. We got Dylan in the building. We got Shaniqua in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got everybody in here. Um, let me make sure. Okay, we got Johnny Boat. Make sure I want to shout out everybody. Lamb Life was happening. All right, so we already got my boy timothy in here let me go ahead and bring my boy timothy in the building what's good michael let me go ahead and bring my boy timothy on and we're gonna get this call in show started uh let me make sure i can hear you what's good timothy can y'all hear him can, can uh, what's good i can hear you can you hear me yes sir we can hear you okay we good i ain't even get a chance to test it yet we went right we started my yeah. say what now? i just started my timer and everything uh huh um yeah, it would be great if this could have been a celebration stream. Um, Man. This is, I, I I let myself be fooled on two accounts. I bought this ticket before I knew the Bears were going to be terrible. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'm just going to be watching a bad game. And then I was just like, it just was just nagging feeling in the back of my head. I'm like, we're not going to lose to the Bears. Like, come on. Like, I'm tampering my expectations because, like, I need people to realize, like, we got Dan Snyder out of here, but, like, fans are still, like, we low-key got PTSD from, like, the bad, the years and years of bad. And I'm, like, I am I remember looking at the offensive line, this offensive line still look bad. And I'm, like, <laughs> okay. I'm, like, but the defense is good. And then, like, you go into the season, you're just, like, so how, how many games are you just going to let people score 30 or more points on us? I'm, like, okay. We're struggling against the Cardinals, but then the Cardinals seem you know, to look better later in the season. I'm like, okay, we get blown out by the Bills. I'm like, okay, it's, it's the Bills, I guess. But I'm like, I paid my hard-earned money to watch that. That was just like, I the last, I had to walk out of the game, Rico. And the only <laughs> reason I had to walk out of the game is because my brother was my ride, and he was done, bro. Oh he was, no! He was the biggest fan. Of, he was done. It like it was five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and that third and two touchdown. Where DJ Moore just like he was just gone. He was just like, 
He started screaming like, "Let's go! We're getting out of here!" And I'm like, "Bro, we gotta, we gotta stay. You never know what can happen." He was like, "If you don't come, you're getting left." And he was like halfway up the stairs. All the fans were pouring out at that point, and I'm just like, "Yeah." I'm like, "I ain't trying to get left." I'm like, "I gotta go." I watched the rest of the game when I got home, and I'm just like, "The reason we even," I'm like, "So we go, we gonna go for it on fourth and fifteen, but not fourth and two, Ron?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. Let's, how about we go for fourth and? Four to yeah. fifteen, give them short field so they can kick a field goal to make it forty to twenty. Yeah, that, that, that sounds good. I don't know. I'm telling you, Rigo, my intrusive thoughts almost kicked in. I was like pretty close to the field, and I was holding a half empty water bottle. And he didn't go on fourth and two. I was legitimately thinking about throwing that bottle of water at Ron. I'm like, <laughs> but is it, I'm like, is it worth getting banned? Like, or getting escorted out of here? I'm like, I'm just holding them. Like, I could just chuck this thing. Right at the back of his head. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, you go from second and twenty-one to fourth and two, and you kick a field goal. I'm yeah, like, man. and it's like it was so dumb because I'm like, you're down two scores. The field goal still has you down two scores. It was we we're down sixteen. You get the field goal. Now we're down thirteen. That's still two scores. Like, what sense does that make? <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes zero sense. I don't know, bro. Forbes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say he was a bust. He just wasn't a yes, good pick. Just like we should have we should have got Gonzalez. It's just, it's just that simple. I'm going to let you go. I think my time is gone, but I'm just like, it, it's looking bad. The season's not over. But I'm like, I, at this point, fire everybody. Whether we had won the game, well, man, we had won the game, I wouldn't say fire everybody, but fire everybody. Like, not even just because of the result. I'm just, I've been over Ron and Del Rio <laughs> for the past two years. I've, I've been saying it, and people call me crazy, like, Jack is like the best coach on this team. Ron, if anything, Ron should go. I'm like, yeah, Ron should go. They're like, oh, Jack is so good and so good. I'm like, no, they both need to go. They're terrible. Hey, that's it. But, oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, man, appreciate that big time, man. My boy Timothy always calling in, always entertaining, man. I appreciate that. I'm sad you had to go witness that in person. I'm, I apologize. I'm going to apologize to everybody that went to that game that calls in because you, you, you deserve it. Um, <laughs> you, you deserve it. I'm going to apologize to every single one of y'all that actually went to the game physically and had to deal with traffic after an L like that. Oh, boy, man. I couldn't imagine, man. Before we get up, um, before we move on to the next callers, because five people called in since Timothy was talking, so we got a nice little line growing. What to make sure I said what's up to Mr. Epps. We got Teron in the building. We got Robin Nero in the building. Patrick West was good. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. My boy Judah was good, was good. And also, most importantly, my boy Javier in the chat also donated a big 50, a big 50 for channel donation, man. My boy Javier, man, I appreciate that big time, man. Appreciate the love. Matter of fact, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do the um Dragon Ball Z with it, too. And we're going to do the air horns for my boy Javier, man. Much love. Can't have no fun, young, without no money, young. So I appreciate that big time. Again, big shout out to my boy Javier there, man. And then let me go ahead and bring on next in line. Because, again, my memory's terrible. So I got to write down who's next. So to make sure I don't forget or get anything mixed up. We got my boy Calvin next. Um, And it's, what is it? It's Friday. So you still you still in the States, I believe, right now. You about to dip out soon, though. Um, let me go ahead and bring my boy calvin in the building what's good calvin how you doing baby yeah i leave tomorrow morning yes man. sir let me tell you something man so i'm gonna focus on the defense I, I, I the one thing i will say about the offense uh very disappointing uh chicago walks right down the field first drive of the game and we can't even match that yeah, and that, that was yeah. just bad you know i mean they scored what on the first three or four possessions whatever it was five actually. it was terrible touchdown field goal but, touchdown but, but, field goal touchdown yep right but rico this is what i'm gonna say man you know, the players we have on defense, they, they, in my opinion, I, they're they're not what everybody thinks they are. They're, they're really not. You, you see all these wide open receivers, man. I mean, Justin Fields only threw it to three receivers. Crazy, one receiver, he, two he tight ends. It, <laughs> dog, it, yeah, one receiver, two tight ends. And I'm like, and then DJ Moore, eight catches, two hundred and thirty. I'm like, bro, real talk. I mean, I know a lot of people like Cam Curl. He's not worth signing, man. He's not a difference maker. You, it, it, now he might be the best, you know, safety we have. But 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 Rico, that's not saying much. <laughs> now, could, could could it could it be could it be Rico, Del Rio and the way he's calling the defenses and, and the situation he's putting them in? Yeah, it could be that. 
But I'm not impressed with nobody on defense. I, I don't think we have cornerback. Look, why is it that our receivers can barely get open? Who who was the who was the Chicago Bears defensive backs? Nobody. And then you got your boy. And then you got Greg Stroman. He looking like a superstar out there. We had this joke what, a couple years ago. <laughs> he was looking like a super. I'm like, bro, we 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 he couldn't play like that with us. So I'm gonna tell you something, man. We need to tra- we need to trade Chase during the season. We need to trade Gibson. We need to trade Gibson during the season. I mean, we need to stop this at the end of the season trying to figure out what we're gonna do with these guys. We need to get trade, get some trade value with these guys during the season, man, because they're doing nothing. They're doing absolutely nothing, bro. The, the, they're running against us. Oh, how many third down convert? Third down to six, third down to seven, and they ran right up the gut. Right up the like middle, out of shotgun. Out of shotgun, shotgun formation. <laughs> bro, I was like, this is ridiculous, bro. The defense is not good under Jack. The, the, Jack's got to go. He's got to go, man. And but I don't I don't think the personnel is there, Rico. I, I I really don't think Saint Juice he's nothing. Kendall's way past his prime, and 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 and, and Forbes is struggling. I, mean, I I just think he was the wrong pick anyway, but he's struggling. So how in the world is it that you had him on AJ Brown last week, and then he on DJ Moore last night? Are you are you serious, Jack? <laughs> you, I mean you you. Why do you think this guy? Can cover these receivers. He cannot cover these receivers for whatever reason. He's not ready, and all that shows you is that he wasn't the right pick for us. Because you got all De- um, Devin Witherspoon. He doing his thing. Gonzalez doing his thing. You know, I mean, everybody's gonna get beat every now and then, but they playing solid though. And here we are because of the coaching. These players ain't performing. So the defense is bad, bro. Get rid of get rid of the people. Don't resign. Don't resign, you know, Chase. I wouldn't pay Cam big money. I, he doesn't deserve it. If he was a game changer, I would say yes. Mm-hmm. But he's not yeah. a game changer, bro. He's not a game changer. That's all I got for you, bro. Peace out, bro. Appreciate it. My boy Calvin, right. right before he dip up out of here too, man. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My boy Calvin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Of course, I just want to shout out my boy again. I got to shout out my boy Javier one more time for the big time donations to the chat, man. Appreciate the love, man. Big time, big time. Let me go ahead and get, we got my boy Johnny Boat up next. You always you always see Johnny Boat in the chat telling everybody to like up the stream. Matter of fact, while we at it right now, go ahead and like up that stream if you haven't already. What's good? My boy Johnny Boat in the building, man. What's good? Yeah, what's going on, Rico? What's happening with you? Shit, sure, uh, I went to, I know I wasn't in the chat much last night. I was in the beginning, but when the game got pretty uh, pretty crazy, I turned it off. And, I, I wouldn't um, recommend it. I stayed yeah. in the stream. I stayed in the stream. <laughs> I just I just put my phone to the side, so, you know, I didn't want to take <laughs> I the person out the stream. You know what I mean? That takes a lot of strength um, in itself. Just, Thank you. <laughs> well, I do have a couple talking points. Um, why don't we run like two tight end sets? Cole Turner makes catches. He makes catches. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. don't they play him? And that, I was going to say that Gonzalez pick was looking better. Um, but I just think maybe Forbes is scared to make a mistake. So he's really jumpy because he doesn't want them to catch it, and then he ends up getting beat. That's why he's so jumpy on the you know the double routes. Yeah, I think a lot yeah, of it that, is mental. That yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That was my first thing. I'm like, maybe he's scared to make a mistake, so he's so jumpy because he doesn't want them to catch it in the first place, but then he gives up big plays, so it's kind of like <laughs> an oxymoron there. <laughs> but I was thinking, why don't we, like, go with a nice young offensive mind? Like, you see when, you know, Sean McVay on offense, you see uh, – I, I like EB. I want him to be the head coach and maybe call the plays, but then him find a nice – young defensive mind you know what i mean it can't it can't get worse than it is now <laughs> you know what i'm saying like but you you see what you know uh what's his name is in miami's doing yeah you know he's a young like offensive Daniels. mind yep. Don mcveigh he's a young offensive mind you know shanahan so why don't we go with a young defensive mind and maybe he'll come up with some new schemes and new like new ways to play some players, and I, I don't know. I just think it would be like a, at least a good try because you see all these young offensive minds doing really good. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't mind DB being the head coach, calling the plays, and then him finding a 
bright, defensive-minded young guy. But then, it, you know, after we score, I know we were down. We go for two-point conversion right away, which is fine. I know we were down. But why didn't he go for the two-point conversion last week to win the game? We <laughs> lost it anyway. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. I get it, but... Yeah. I mean, he lost it anyway, so, like, he went for it right away when there was still two quarters left to play last night, so. Yeah. That's, that's just. I'm also mad we didn't, we why? kicked that field goal when it was fourth and two, like my boy Timothy said. I hated that. Yeah. Hey, exactly. Yeah, I just think, I think it's past Ron's time, you know. his. Did you hear his halftime speech? He's like, what'd you tell the players? Yeah, he was like, like he didn't tell him anything, right? I thought he said he didn't tell him anything. The players talked to themselves or something like that. Yeah, he said I let them talk to each other. <laughs> I was like, uh, what is he doing? He needs to, yeah, you need some emotion, some 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 hype. It's like so, so I think EB comes in as head coach, calls the plays, and he finds a you know great defensive coordinator, young minded, new schemes, new. Did you see? Uh, Sorry, I know I only have 20 seconds left. I had one more talking point, but I'm going to forget it to say this. Did you? I don't know if you watched the New Heights podcast with Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey. Nah, I've seen clips, but nah. Yeah, so Travis Kelsey said he likes watching, well, likes watching Washington games because he likes to guess the plays that they do because, because they still run the offense that they ran from Kansas City. He's like, oh, it's like a guessing game for me. <laughs> so EB didn't change up much at all. He literally just copy and pasted. What did you tell him? Yeah, so then – so yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what he said. He was like, yeah, they run the same plays we ran, if not still run. But then it's like teams are already planned for that. Yep. So our offense is playing from behind from the beginning. Yeah, that's not healthy. That's not good at all. You know what I mean? But yeah, just, I had a couple talking points. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll throw them in the chat. I uh, appreciate the time. Yes, sir. Everybody waiting in the call thing, like up the stream. Yeah. Appreciate that. My boy Johnny Boat, man, he always makes sure to tell people to like up the stream. Every time he pull up, every stream, man, that's my dog right there, man. Appreciate you calling in, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, have a nice one. All right, you too, man. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me bring. Oh, before we get to that, yeah. Uh, where's the stat? I saw the my boy Bradley put in. Yeah, Martin Mayhew being 144, 223. That's that's terrible. That's that's terrible. Also, if you're enjoying the stream, make sure you leave that like. And also, if you want to support the channel, you could donate to Dollar Sign Rico Scores the Cash App. You can see that on the screen right now, um, like right under all the stats and stuff. Even though ESPN is tripping, right? I don't know what's going on with ESPN lately. Is it my Google Chrome or is it ESPN? Because stuff keeps disappearing. I just got to highlight over it real quick and it'll come back. I don't know what's going on with that. I got to figure that one out. Um, but yeah, to the uh, point that Johnny made... Um, I made this in my video that's been uploading to my computer since I, I mean I was I started recording at like three something and I'm still waiting for it to upload. I had to edit and it's uploading to my computer. Then even after that, it's got to upload to YouTube from my computer. But I made the point that what honestly is Jack Do um is Ron Rivera doing? He said Eric Bieniemy completely runs the offense, completely runs it. He's hands off completely on that. Jack DeRio, it's completely his defense. If Ron Rivera's not motivating the players at halftime, he's not talking to them. Literally, what is Ron Rivera doing? Martin Mayhew, Chris Polian, Marty Herney are all partial GMs. Ron Rivera is a part of that. He probably gets the last say but martin mayhew i think is the one putting in the most hours into like player evaluation and draft strategy free agency stuff like that so it's like honestly at this point what is ron rivera doing if at the very least you're not the one coaching up the players and hyping them up in, um during halftime so it's really interesting i like ron rivera a lot but it's honestly like what are you doing if you're not at least the one talking to him at halftime i mean maybe it was like a strategy to have them talk to each other to see what happens but I mean, honestly, what what is he doing at this point? All right, let me go ahead and bring on the next caller. We got my boy Isaiah in the building. Welcome back, Isaiah. What's happening with you? What's up? What's good? What's How you feeling? What's good? Not happy about that game. Not happy. Not happy about that game, man. That game. Man, that game made me mad. <laughs> stressed really out. <laughs> that ain't fair. <laughs> Defense aren't stepping up. At all. 
Nah. Kendall Fuller tried to jump up for the interception. He couldn't do it. Yeah, took a risk, gambled, missed out. Big loss on the gamble. Big loss. It would have been a beautiful win, but a terrible loss ended up happening. Yeah. That's crazy. That's the only point we ever got lost by 40. This is sad. <laughs> Ever this is bad, bad, bad. Really bad. Yes, really, really, really. <laughs> well, well, I hope they can do better with Atlanta Falcons. Nah, they better. I'm trying to go to that game. I don't want to get embarrassed in person around all my folks, oh, too. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. No. Don't me and Riz like that. That's sad. <laughs> now, this game ball is sad now. <laughs> but yeah, man. Anything else you wanted to say, my boy Isaiah? No. All right, man. Appreciate you calling in, man. Always call in, man. I appreciate uh, it. Uh, yes, sir. My boy Isaiah, man. Calling in again two weeks in a row now. Yes, sir. That's my boy right there. Let me go ahead. We got my boy Isaiah in. Now we got next up, we got Fresh, then my boy Astonishing, and then we have a 704 number that just called in. So let me go ahead and bring my boy Fresh on next. My boy Fresh Montana, how you feeling over there? Hey, what's good, bro? What's good? Hey, um, my bad for, le for the last time. I fell asleep, man. I was tired, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I feel that. I was tired. I feel that. Hey, look, that game, that shit got me contemplating. Not even going to the Atlanta game. Like, <laughs> I had to call my shorty. Because I was in Salt Lake City watching the game. I'm like, man. I said, babe, I don't know if I want to go to the Atlanta game, man. I said, this is sick. She's like, nah, we got to go. I want to go. I've never been. I'm like, all right. All right. Like, I go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm still going to the Atlanta game. But, man, I just ordered my Duran, my Duran paint jersey. I don't even know if I want to. Uh, you might want to intercept that. <laughs> you might want to intercept that yeah. package. <laughs> yeah, why? Why is it no one fired today? I, I don't. <laughs> I don't understand why no one got fired. Yo, did you see Magic Johnson's face during the game? Yeah, he was. Oh, he that was visibly was upset. Sick. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. You had Magic there. You had Josh there. You had one of the other uh, 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 owners there. Someone should have been fired today. Jack, at least. But uh, Jack and Ron, for real. One or both of them should have been fired this morning. Like, this is the perfect time. Third, we don't play again for, what, 10 days? This is the perfect time to fire them. Like, and I'm not even the one for calling for people's jobs. But th this is year four, bro. This is year four and Jack Del Rio's defense. People don't understand it. Year four. Year four, bro. How, how are we giving up... 30 plus points a game. <laughs> but we can't stop the run. We can't stop the pass. We can't get, we, we can't, we just can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just, we just, just a big can't. Look, look, I don't understand why, like, he, his, his scheme is outdated. This ain't the 85, we, this ain't the 80s and the 90s. Like, I don't get, like, forget all that, uh, what's that, uh, uh, gap scheme, pass rush. Man, forget all that. Send them wolves out there and have the middle linebacker stay in the middle to plug that middle gap. It's that simple. It's really that simple, bro. Yeah. Send the wolves, let them rush, and have one linebacker stay in the middle. So if he try to run, the linebacker got him. I don't understand. I can, I'm not even a defensive coordinator, but I can see that. This freaking zone match scheme, whatever, it doesn't work. Cut it out. Stop. They need to stop <laughs> doing that. They need to play man and have a safety. What are safeties for? You understand what I'm saying? They need to play man, get man coverage every freaking down and have a safety over the top. And if it's a good receiver, have the safety kind of shade towards that side. It's that simple. Bro. Literally that simple. I don't understand. Keep running the zone and people keep beating. It's the same move. It's not even different moves. <laughs> every, every good receiver is killing our secondary with the same double move, bro. They're not doing nothing extravagant, nothing that, nothing we never seen before. They're killing them with the same move. Put a safety over the top. What are the safeties for? You got three safeties out there. Like, one of them needs to go over the top. I don't understand. That's something. <sighs> and then, uh, 
ED. Like, bro, the first few games when we should have been running, you didn't want to run. The game where they're missing their whole secondary, <laughs> the perfect time to throw the ball, you don't want to throw the ball. You want to start off running. Make that make sense. <laughs> he started throwing it behind the line of scrimmage to Brian Robinson. As soon as everybody yeah, got hurt, <laughs> as soon as as soon as the Bears secondary was gone, we started throwing it behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it is crazy. They came in the game without their best safety and their best cornerback and their nickel. And you want to start off running it? Why? Why? Take advantage of that. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then I think it's time for them to take out both the tackles and put, them, put Cornelius, Cornelius Lucas – Put them on the left side, left tackle, and Trey Scott put them at right tackle. I, they can't be worse than what Leno and uh, Wiley doing. They can't be. We play with <laughs> Lucas. We know Lucas is halfway decent. I don't even understand why we were bringing Leno in the first place. Lucas is decent. At least he can move. You know what I'm saying? He, he, <laughs> he can move. It's about time to put in Lucas at left tackle, Trey Scott at right tackle. They can't be no worse, bro. Listen, I'm not even a coach and you can see it. I don't even need to watch the All-22 to see that. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you don't even need to do that. You can see it. And please, somebody explain to me why did we not bring back Cole Holcomb, but you brought in Cody Barton? I, that doesn't make sense. Cole Holcomb ain't even getting paid bro. that much money. That's the craziest part, too. Bro, exactly. And he's balling for the Steelers. He's balling for the Steelers. What is Cody doing? He's late to react. Bro, I played middle linebacker. Cody Barton is late to react every single play. He's late to react. He, I don't know if – he might be a fast guy, but he's slow to react. So it doesn't even matter how fast you are, bro. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Like, I don't understand. Like, bro, what are we doing? I just go. I'm watching the game, right? I'm watching the game. I'm in the tumor. I'm in the truck watching the game. I said, this can't be life. This can't be life. This is Chicago Bears. This can't be life. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be light, bro. Bro, they, they, they've been giving up at least two turnovers and two sacks every game this year. We don't get a sack. Well, I guess we sacked them. But we don't get no turnovers. They had two sacks as far as their defense. They, they sacked us five times. Why? How? It doesn't make sense. I don't get it, bro. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, this is why, this is why, like, yeah, Ron and Del Rio need to go. Like, and people say, oh, well, who they who going to call the defense? Fucking Justinina, shit! Like it doesn't. It, <laughs> you don't need to. It doesn't, bro. It doesn't take much to call the defense. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like offense where you got thousands of plays, not thousands of plays in defense. If you can come up with mad different type of exotic blitzes, okay. But it's even freaking man, uh, zone match, or was it was it cover one, cover two, cover three, cover four? Like it's that simple. That simple, bro. It, it, it ain't that hard. Even you're playing a 3-4 or 4-3 or 5-1, it's not that hard. Justin Nita can call the defense. They need to get rid of Jack. Like, he should have been gone, bro. Like, he should. Ron need to go. Like, yo, bro, what are you doing? You go for two. What is, what is Ron doing? Why are you kicking the field? We're down a million points. Yeah, that field goal is crazy. What the what the <laughs> was that? The seven yard line or something like that? Yeah. Four and three, you kick a field goal? When you got Sam... The gunslinger Sam Howe doesn't make sense to me. Who gave him Riverboat? Who nicknamed him Riverboat? <laughs> like, that person needs to be out of here, bro. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take up all your time. I'm out there. But like, yeah, that, that was stupid. Go, go for it. Four for three. You're already down a million points. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave with like this. Because uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make I'm going to go ahead and do a video myself and just prank. Because this is ridiculous. But <laughs> Sam Howell is him. I'm a, Sam Howell is him. Like, mm -hmm. up, Sam Howell is him. If people can't see that Sam Howell is him, then I don't know what they're watching. Chase Young balled out. I don't understand why people talking shit about Chase. He's been a, him and DeRon Payne been the best people on defense since he came in. Like, I, I don't know what people watching. Yeah. I don't know what you're. I don't know what these fans are watching. Chase Young was dominant. Best defensive players, dominant. He was dominant. Ever since he came back. He had um he had eleven pressures in this game last night, and that's the most any pressures um any edge rusher has had in a single game this season. Like anybody, not just the Commanders, but any player in the NFL, nobody's had eleven pressures in one game, and Chase Young had that last night. Exactly. Like, well, twenty I think it was twenty nine yeah. pass rush snaps too. That's incredible. That's crazy. 
that man balling. Like, I don't know if they should resign him or not, but he's balling. Him, Ron Payne, him and Ron Payne. Like, I don't know what Allen and, 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 and Sweat doing lately. Like, the, him and Deron Payne are the best people on defense to pass in game. And like I said, Sam Howell is him. And, yeah, man, um, I, I'm still going to the Atlanta game, even though I'm dreading, man. <laughs> so, if you be there, hopefully I see you. Uh, shit, fat guy with Deron Payne jersey on. You feel me? All right, man. Thank you for taking my call, bro. All right, man. Fresh. All right, man. Appreciate that. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my boy, Fresh Montana, in the building. And then we got my boy, Command Center. Then we got my dog, Ivory, after that. Let me go ahead and bring my boy, Astonishing, a.k.a. Washington Command Center, who you always see in the chat. Let me bring my boy on. What's good, Astonishing? Man, nothing this week. But... <laughs> I didn't even think about the fact that I said that. <laughs> I really, I really, really, really can't blame this on the coaching. Everybody and their moms out here putting it on the coaches, calling for their jobs like they do every game. But it just drives it home to me that most fans don't know what the hell they're looking at. <laughs> because there's nothing wrong with the scheme. This game was entirely down to the players. Lack of effort, execution. You can watch every big play, watch every time they move the ball back, and clearly see the spot a defender was supposed to be occupying. It's plain as day. Safeties, linebackers, cornerbacks, even in the defensive line. Like, like you saw the big holes in the middle. That's where uh, Allen and Payne are trying to stunt out and Chase must have got a little more push and was like, nah, I'm just going to do this instead of rolling onto the inside like he was supposed to into that hole. You can see where everybody made mistakes. All the players made the mistakes. It had nothing to do with the scheme. And they just got tricked and it opened up these big chunk plays. And you can see... DBs, linebackers, no matter who it was, they were giving up yards of separation. That's not the scheme. That's lack of effort. They just didn't have it in them. You had guys whiffing, bouncing off of guys, sliding off of tackles, <laughs> being drunk for yards. That was annoying. And I think it's like the, it was just crazy. This game was like the, like the perfect storm of like the crazy worst situation. Like they had a like a bunch of injuries, but they also had players returning for injured from injuries that actually helped them because we were all, we were coming off a short week, but they had fresh guys in. Like we had a brutally tough game division game against a Super Bowl runner up. Ended up going into overtime. Our dudes were ground down, but these guys like they had injuries and they had players returning, so. All the players on the field for them, and they were the second string. They were fresh and they were hungry. And you had mm -hmm. like former Red Steve, Virginia native Greg Stroman out there on revenge. Revenge <laughs> <laughs> And a sack. Like, yeah, the fact that they had backup players in actually helped them because they were all beat up from, you know, four days ago like we were. And no scheme in the world works if your players don't execute. Our guys were just running on fumes, making mistake after mistake. Like I don't there I don't see how like there's nothing prehistoric about Jack Del Rio's defense. He's running all the ahead of the curve, you know, two high match quarters, cover six shells, slick post snap rotations. Blanket and coverage schemes, the kind of stuff Brandon Staley's been, you know, kicked everyone's ass with when he was in L.A., that Vic Fangio's been kicking ass with for years, the same kind of stuff the Bills kicked our ass with. Jack Del Rio's running all that same stuff with a great team. He's got his own wrinkles in it. It's just we were, we were gassed out this week. And, and like he puts his own wrinkle with the with the Senko, uh formation mm. instead of using like like three four tight sets or four three unders 
with linebackers because, you know, we want DBs out there instead of linebackers. Yeah. Like, I got full confidence that this defense will pick up in the next two weeks like it's done every year. We start out slow, and I, I think the reason we start out slow, you know, is that we those or it takes those early games to get acclimated because we're building the secondary. We're getting every, this, the scheme's complicated. We're getting everybody into the scheme, and it works. Like, you know, five games in, it's going to be a top five defense like it's been the last four years. But they're building secondary, and the secondary is like an offensive line. Got to get chemistry. They got to know where to go to help who. And everybody's getting acclimated. Like year one, we had COVID, and Kendall Fuller and Cam, they were, you know, they got, it took them a few games to get everything going. Land, they got hurt, but a million other things messed up. But the defense still <laughs> ended up pulling it all together and being good. Year two, Landon came back, got acclimated. And then we had Ben St. Juice and Defoe that got hurt, but they developed as the year went through. So last year when they came out, Ben St. Juice and Derek Forrest took the first couple weeks to get acclimated. Cam, Cam came back. Everything clicked together. Now this year, we got Percy. And in my opinion, I mean, I doubted him a bit, but we should have Holmes in there. Now he's had a whole year to try to get acclimated to this. And he looked, you know, good at times in preseason we need to yeah. stick that we need to stick forbs and quan in the oven let them cook a little bit let them <laughs> develop and then let you know let the next step like like we had cam and then we had ben st juice and defo come out and then we got percy and it should be Holmes out there let them go in. and forbs and quan are the final pieces we just need to let them, you know, like I said, get back in the oven, cook a little bit, you know, get developed, and let these other guys go. We, I mean, the, the team, you know, in, in two weeks, it's going to be one of the best, you know, defenses in the league. It's just this was the perfect storm. Plus, they didn't take him serious. Terry himself, the way he was talking, they, they didn't take the Bears serious at all. That's a mm -hmm. recipe for disaster, Trap especially game. when, you know, we just went through a war. Everybody was beat up. They had, even if they were, like I said, second string, they had fresh dudes in. We didn't. And it, it was not at all on the coaching. I mean, just watch it. Like, these, like you could see where safeties were supposed to be, like, man, I just don't know how you could see the players just – like, not do what they're supposed to do so clearly. And like, yeah, we got to fire the coach. You know, like, yeah, we got to get rid of this coach because this player is making mistakes. This player doesn't know what the hell he's doing out there. I don't, I don't think that that's on the coach. Like, if you look at that that first big play to uh, to DJ, like, there was supposed to be a safety there. And if you look at the first touchdown. The safety bent on the inside when he was supposed to be over the top. If he is over the top there, it slows it it, it slows uh, Turner down for I don't know if it, I think it was Forbes to catch up to him, but mm -hmm. it takes that touchdown away. Like there's like all this was schemed right. It's just the players did the wrong thing. Like I don't know, man. I'm I mean. If anything, you look at this game and just see how good Sam is, man. Like, Sam's doing great. We got that to look forward to. Like I said, I have no doubt that the defense in the next two weeks is going to be where it needs to be. Everybody's coming back healthy now, too. We got F.A. Obata back. We're going to be able to rotate, you know, keep them fresh. And he's somebody who definitely do the, you know, go inside. There's not going to be a big hole when Allen and Payne stunt to the outside. F.A. Obata is a guy that knows to to roll inside and get those guys running down. So mm -hmm. I think Chase, I think cause he got a little overzealous at a couple times. Like he bought out, but when you saw those big holes in the middle, that was clearly where a twist went wrong. And, you know, 
it was on them, you know, mm-hmm. like it was, it was, he, what happened was probably like the, he got a little more push on the offensive lineman than he expected. And he knew he was supposed to twist in, but he was like, oh, I might be able to just get this sack straight up. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, I mean, look, the last couple of years, it was slow starts, it happens, but now when the defense gets together, when it finally clicks here in the next couple of weeks, we actually got a quarterback. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean. I'm happy to have a quarterback. I'll tell you that. Thank goodness. Yeah, everything's going to fall. It's going to fall into place. We're going to have a good run. But uh, yeah, the offensive line will get better, too. I mean, it's a, it's only a matter of time before we get Wiley off the field. I mean, <laughs> as, soon as, he's off the, as soon as he's off the field, I think everything's going to be great. But uh, that – He's the only thing that is just hopeless. Only like I think everybody else will build some chemistry. I think we got other dudes like we could put out there. But Wiley is hopeless, man. And everybody talking about firing Jack and blaming stuff on other people. Hey, your boy E B is the reason that Wiley is our starting right tackle. He brought that man with him from Kansas City. When Darian Kennard is setting, you know, their first round pick that should have been a second round pick, he's sitting over there on their practice squad. We could just sign that dude up for free. And, I mean, but we got Wiley instead. So, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand that, man. Hey, oh, a little weird thing. I don't know if I said this last week, but in Ron's fourth year, in uh, Carolina, in Carolina, his fourth year in Carolina, in the third round, he drafted Trey Turner, and he signed Andrew Norwell as an undrafted free agent. By week six, both those guys were starting, and it secured the offensive line. So. If we want to throw Ricky Stromberg out there, third round pick, and then swap in Mason Brooks, maybe, you know, history can repeat itself. We can, you know, same same recipe and get the same results. I know I went over the limit. I'm sorry, y'all. My bad. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. But that's my boy Commence and y'all see him in the chat and everything, man. Appreciate that, man. All right, take it easy, y'all. Yes, sir. And my brother just pulled up my brother Jalen in the chat. Can we just beat the Falcons next Sunday, please, man? <laughs> and also, my boy Larry donated to the chat. He said a dollar for each sack allowed. So appreciate that big time. My boy Larry donated to the dollar sign. Rico scores cash out. Appreciate that big time. And my boy Calvin as well donated um, to the chat. A big 25 to the chat. Appreciate that big time donation. He just called in earlier. So he called in and he donated. So that's my boy right there, man. I appreciate that right now. He about to go ahead and dip up out of here out of the States again tomorrow morning. So, man, I appreciate all of that, man. Appreciate everybody that's already donated. Shouts out to Larry and Calvin once again. Um, let me go ahead and bring on the next caller. So we got my boy Ivory up next. How you doing over there, Ivory? We got like we got like a line hey. too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, what's, uh, what's up, Rico? I'm gonna be fast, not really, but um, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no man. Um, uh, that guy talk about this ain't the coaching man. It's clearly the damn coaching man. Listen, does he realize the reason we have Wiley is because our coach decided to sign Wiley? Like we drafted our first two draft pick with cornerbacks. He benched the one of them last night, and he won't play the other one. Like you can't have <laughs> these things occur. Like what are we doing? Like the, the idea is to bring players in here who can help the team win. Now let's get on. First, I'm gonna start with this offense. Listen, I'm sorry. But Sam Howe has not proven to be the guy for me yet. He's so far to me, he's just a guy. I like Sam Howe. I like some of his traits. But dude is missing. He is not seeing the field very well. And he's not connecting on the deep ball. The De'Ami Brown play should have been a touchdown. You got to make that throw. That cannot be. That's a touchdown. 
That's not a hard throw. The guy's in front of your yeah, face. Yeah, that was bad. You gotta make that throw. A couple deep passes to Terry. They were wildly underthrown. I don't know. I've watched every game this season and watched him. He's just not competing on the really deep ball very well right now. I get it. The line is trash. The reason the line is trash is because of two players, Wiley and Nick Gates. Nick Gates is terrible. He's getting pushed back all the way into the quarterback, and, and, and Sam is feeling it, and he keeps trying to escape out the back door. Guess what? Other teams are hip to Sam trying to run out the side door, and they're yeah. waiting for him. The, yeah. D, the DMs are like, oh, okay, I know he's going to flush over here. You know what I'm saying? And so that's not working. And I watched. I was catching some of the all-22 footage. On a couple of those third downs, there were guys open. Sam just missed them. There were guys in the middle of the field open. Sam was missing guys. There were guys running open. And I was like, yo, Sam has not seen the field real well at times. The two-point conversion, when when they highlighted it, Kirk Herbstreit, uh, uh, the Antonio Gibson cut right there. Yeah, it was, was wide right open. There, wide yep. open. Yeah. It just got to dump it to him. And the crazy part was Sam was looking in the direction. I was like, <laughs> why is he not turning loose the ball? And then he threw late across the middle a couple times. That's a no-no as a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So, and another thing, we played DJ Moore. He got a million catches. AJ Brown, million catches. Why aren't we highlighting Terry the same way? Why Man. are we just throwing it to Terry all the damn time? Man. Like deep, short, middle. Just, we, we have one of these guys, but for some reason, we won't just throw him the ball. Now, EB, I blame him for this because he believes in this sort of Kansas City equal opportunity offense. Well, listen. We're playing in the NFC, and we have a dominant guy. That's the guy we need to be throwing it to all the time. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, offense ain't the problem. Now on to the defense. Now that's the problem. First of all is Jack scheme. He got these guys playing off coverage. And, and not, not one of them can play off coverage. Now, Forbes is so confused now. First of all, Forbes is lighter body. So when he comes up and that guy catches the ball, He's getting muscled out of the play every time now. So he can't yeah. even make a tackle because the time he comes up at 160 pounds, they're just forcing him off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Forbes is a press corner. Put him in press. He can run and adjust with the guys. He got good hips. You let him run lockstep with a guy, and you take the quarterback's quick read away from him. Anybody who's played Madden, just the video game, who's played quarterback or sound like football, the easiest throw that makes the quarterback most comfortable is when the defender is playing off because you can see the route and you can see the defense. When you're playing press, that that causes the quarterback anxiety because he's just not sure how open his guy is and he has to hold it a different another second. Mm-hmm. All we yeah. need is another second for our pass rush to turn from a three-sack night into like a six, seven, eight-sack night. It's just a matter of scheming it right. And as far as not stopping the run, what I say is coaching. You know why they're running? It's because we put the light package on the field. We take one of the linebackers out, and then they run against our light box. You know, we have we have too many corners on the field, and they run against that. Te- teams are out scheming Jack. And I say, well, okay, it's Jack and fall again. Why not invert the, the invert the linemen sometimes? Put Sweat and Chase inside, run the big guys outside, that's what other teams do. They get creative. So the offensive line, the offensive line, not sure what we're doing. But we do the same crap the same way every game. Mm. And this is the what? This is the fourth mobile quarterback that's that scored thirty on us. Every time <laughs> yep. we play a quarterback that yep. can move, we give up big points. And for the life of me, we know they're mobile. I watch other teams spy quarterbacks. We never have a spy. We never have a spy. And and I, Jamin Davis is the perfect quarterback, to, the perfect linebacker to be a spy. Yeah. He's big, he's fast, and he runs out on the sideline. Yeah, what do we see? Cody Barton, the slowest, softest linebacker in the league, and he's always getting schemed into plays where the other team scores touchdowns and stuff. So it's Cody. Cody Barton shouldn't be on this team. Why not play the faster Cleek Hudson? Why not? I don't understand what it is that we're trying to do out here on defense. You know what I'm saying? And we're so timid. Like we we made DJ Moore gave him a career knife simply because of scheme. It wasn't because that he was he's a great receiver. We just got our scheme, and it wasn't just Forbes. Everybody was giving up catches on DJ Moore. 
for some reason we're playing the Tampa 2 uh, defense. Hey, what are we doing with the Tampa 2? Our corners aren't even being physical. you got to run the guy up the field and then turn him loose. Another guy who needs to be benched, Percy Butler. Has all the <laughs> yeah, that was traits, terrible. But he don't know what he's doing back there. He don't know what he's doing, man. He got the traits physically, but there's a reason he wasn't thought of that highly to be a first or second round pick because he don't really know what he's doing. He's athletic, but he don't know how to play the coverage. And Derek Forrest has been equally as bad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, I'm beginning to think we need to put curl, slide, curl back a little bit. I'm even almost to the point where I want to put Fuller as the other safety, bring Danny Johnson in to play corner with, with, with St. Juice and Forbes. You know, you got to put your best cover guys on the field at this point. But you can't keep Percy Butler out there flailing around, missing coverages, <laughs> taking the wrong <laughs> angles and doing all that mess he's doing. Like, I don't want to see that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see that. So I just think, uh, uh, again, I like Sam Howell. I, I really do like Sam. I think he can grow into the position. But there's things he's doing. He's missing guys. He's missing guys. He really is. And I... The reason I think he's starting to miss guys is because he's getting hit too much. You can't get sacked five or six times every game and then not start looking at the rush. Like last night, I thought he got shook up last night. I thought he took a couple hits. And by the end of the game, you know, on the, on the, the last few possessions, I thought he was gassed. I thought he was hurt. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, yo, Sam is, you know, he, he breaking tackles. And doing I felt like he thought he was back at North Carolina his last year. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, Sam has got the heart. He has the talent. I just think right now, if we don't protect him, you know, Brissett going to be playing in a couple of weeks. You'll, you'll never keep this guy healthy. And the Nick Gates, Wiley Gamble, it's just not paid off. And it's inexcusable that our offensive line and our linebacker situation is this poor four years into the system, man. We should have had a legit offensive line. Leno is our left tackle. He was somebody the Bears didn't want. The Bears. <laughs> if, if somebody kick somebody off the Bears, we shouldn't be signing him and say, "Yeah, we're gonna re-sign him and give him money to be our left tackle." You know, so I, I, I'm just—it's just a little dismaying how to, how we're playing out. But hey, this is the Jack Del Rio season. We start off every season slow, and we 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 have a losing streak at the beginning. We'll win a game. I put, I'm I'm predicting that we're gonna win the Atlanta game, and we're gonna win three or four straight after that. This is what this is what we do under Jack. You know, trust me, the team ain't going to quit on Jack. They're not going to give up and say, oh, you know. No, we're going to beat Atlanta probably in a squeaker because that's what we – we only win the squeakers with Rivera. We get blown out, but we won't – we can't win a game by 20 points. So we'll win a squeaker in Atlanta. We'll somehow beat the Giants. We'll beat the uh, Eagles at home. We'll get on a running streak. Trust me, I'm not lost that this season is lost. But it's just what plays out with Jack. I don't care what happens. We start slow and then we'll we'll catch fire in the middle of the season. So that'll happen this year. So I'm I'm aggravated because I it, it happens every year. But I'm not mad, you know that that thinking that the season is over and all that stuff. You know we we still we're gonna we're gonna be right there. Trust me, we're gonna be, win between eight and ten games. It just depends on how healthy we are. And uh, I like Chase Young. Chase is playing well. He gave up a couple outside contained things, but he was he was great last night. Payne was great. The yep. D line is solid. The D line has been doing okay, man. They just need better back end stuff. And I just feel like every year the back end is just ridiculous at certain points. <laughs> like like Jack really don't know what he's doing coaching the back end, man. But and and so and the trust weight thing, uh, not trust weight. The, Joey, Joey Sly, Sly. Yeah. got to make the field goal, man. Come on, dude. Like, 46 yard man, come on, man. We, we can't – we got to give ourselves a chance to win. You know what I mean? And the last thing before I go, uh, Justin Fields, he – we should have been aggressive with him at the beginning of the game. Once he saw he had success in that first touchdown, I knew it was going to be a long night. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Once he got that he confidence. Here he here. Yeah. He got that confidence. Man, yeah. we should have been blitzing him and roughing him off. And, and coming after him. We'll see him in a week or two against another team. He'll have a rotten game because they went after him and not respected him. And then and then we'll look like, wow, we'll have to us. You know what I'm saying? But we got Desmond Ritter coming up. Hopefully Heineke doesn't hit the field for the revenge game. <laughs> Hopefully we can keep Ritter on the field. If Heineke is starting, I'm going to be like, Lord, not the revenge game. 
And it's funny because I knew when Dick Buck is that I was like, yo, this is a bad homie when Dick Buck is that. Like, yeah. Oh, God. That team is one of me. It's like something happens when something, a luminary dies. I was like, oh, God, not Dick Buck is that. I was like, oh, yeah. goodness. So, yeah, man, we out of it, man. But, all right, Rico, you take it easy, man. All all right. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Appreciate right. the Ivory as always, man. All right. Yes, sir, my boy Ivory, my boy Ivory. Yeah, they they played with way more heart than we did. Like I feel like that was a lot of it. Arguably, even the majority of it was just it just looked like they cared more than we did for some crazy reason. I don't even know why it would happen. With were we not motivated? I don't know. I mean, somebody said earlier that we overlooked them. We came into the game just assuming we would win. I don't know. Let me go ahead and bring in my boy Alexander next. How you doing over there, Alexander? What's up, buddy? What's good with you? Not much, man. I don't know why everybody's so, so upset. We just played to our strength. We just played who we are. We're a team that ends streaks. We ended the Steelers. We ended the Eagles. We ended uh, the Ravens. And now we ended their losing streaks. I don't know why everyone's <laughs> mad. We played to who we are. <laughs> that's, that's terrible, dog. That's terrible. But, nah, man, uh, the, I had a bad day yesterday, and that just put the cherry on the top. And, oh. Oh, man. Man, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I just I couldn't believe it. And I had a feeling when I saw Dick Buckus died, I was like, "Oh, they gonna kill us tonight." And sure enough, man, murdered us. What a disgrace! But honestly, it just years pass. We offense can't score ten points a game, and the defense looks good. And then other years, the offense can score twenty plus, and the defense can't stop nobody. I just don't understand. Maybe this team is really cursed. <laughs> yeah, it's Maybe just it's annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. Oh, I can't be. I can't just park and talk on the phone. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's crazy. Can't even sit in the parking lot and talk on the phone no more. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. You let me talk on the phone and drive. Like, what the fuck? My bad, I didn't mean to drop that. <laughs> you good. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying. Really, really annoying. Yeah. Uh, we just can never play four quarters of football. We can never play both both sides of the ball. And if we do have both sides of the ball, then the special teams messes it up for us. Yep. It's, it's just really, really annoying and frustrating being a, a fan of this team. Yeah. I mean, like, because even the Eagles game, yeah, we man. fixed a lot of things I didn't expect to work, and then suddenly Tress Way couldn't punt. So, yeah, to your point, yep. it's always something. Yep. It's always something. Always something. The worst punt he's had in years. Yeah, in literally. Overtime against a rival team that we should have beat. Yeah. <sighs> but it's – and I and now I don't know about Josh Harris because he's just in the booth getting lit every game, so – did we just go from one crazy owner to another? <laughs> he cooling, man. He he. Ain't, this didn't ruin his night at all. He was probably chilling, laughing. No, that cooling. man was partying. And Magic Johnson over there tearing up the paper plates and the TVs, and Josh Harris over there throwing down alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a, this is gonna be an interesting next three to five years with this Commander team. Yeah, because I got I got a feeling that Josh Harris. I, I don't know, man. I'm just I got a I got a sad suspicion that Ron Rivera is going to be the coach again next year. I just do. I wouldn't be surprised, especially do. if we do that little yep. middle of the year win streak again and just barely miss yep. the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, I would not be surprised either. But I think honestly, like if we sat down and thought about it, we could package some of these players. Like Chase and others. Like, I mean, Chase, you can't really package him unless it's during the season. But I don't know. I mean, I like Sam Howe, but the offense stalls still just like every other mediocre, mediocre quarterback we have. We come out, we go three and out, two, three, play, two, three throws in a row, and then halftime comes, and then they just magically wake up. We need yeah. a quarterback that can come out, see the field, and just throw it down people's throats from the beginning. Please. I'm almost yeah. to the point where yeah. we just need to start oh. out no huddle. Like, it, at this point, because no huddle, yeah. we just so yeah. good at it. Just go ahead and start no huddle we first drive. People, we murder people in up-tempo. We murder people <laughs> in up-tempo. <laughs> but we just don't do it. 
Yeah, yeah. man. That, I don't. I, at this point, I don't know. Do we need? Do we need to just trade everybody and get Kayla Williams? Do we need to stick with Howell? <laughs> I've been seeing that in thing? the chat lately. <laughs> <laughs> I like right. Sam Howell though. All right, man. I'll let you get to some of the other callers because I know you got a line, man. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate that, Alexander, man. Thank you for calling back again, man. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, my boy, Alexander. We gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this going, too. I wanna make sure I ain't miss anything, like, too crazy. Um, so we got my boy, um, we have the, where is that? Oh, the 828 number next. There we go. 828 number, who's this? What's up, Rico? Yes, sir. What's good? Who's this? This is Elijah Harrison. Okay, okay, okay. Bet, 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 bet. Let me go ahead and say, say my boy. Yes, sir, man. How you feeling over there? Feeling okay, I guess. Uh, I remember uh, after the Bills game because I, I just thought that uh, I just thought that uh, Eric Bieniemy caused at least a third of the problem, and I didn't, I didn't, I thought that a lot of what Sam's, uh, I mean, I, this will make a point at some point, but uh, I thought that there ain't no way Sam's not going to crash and burn throwing 80% to 20% in the first half and long developing routes and everything like that, so that's why the whole week after that, I just ragged DB all across the internet trying to, I don't know, get some, I don't know, it probably didn't do nothing, I mean, undoubtedly it didn't do nothing, but I was like, please, <laughs> please change this a little bit. Golly, Mark, it's simple. This is not complicated stuff right here. And uh, then uh, going into the Eagles game, I was uh, I had this attitude. I said, "Look, I ain't gonna expect nothing. I'm just gonna enjoy myself. I'm gonna watch the coaching and see if it's better. If it's not, it's not. If it is, it is. If we if it is good, we'll win. If we if it's not, we'll lose." And they surprised me. Eric Bieniemy stopped doing the, probably two of the things. Uh, that I complained so much about, and Jack Del Rio ended up sliding into the area that Eric the Enemy was in for me after week three. With the target in his back. Or week four. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well, after that, I didn't hold the same energy for the Bears game because we did so good against Philadelphia, because, but I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do that again until Jack proves that he, that this coaching, this coaching staff has at least got it to mid at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to put your faith in them, and then something like that happens. It's hard to believe in them unless they could do it consistently over a good long period of time. I feel that. Yeah, I should have kept the energy I had about EB after the Bills game with Jack Del Rio after the Eagles game, but I didn't. And now, <laughs> I, now I guess I'm going to. But uh, yeah, you know, I guess I'm going to, and they say Jack usually figures it out about week seven, week eight, or whatever. And I don't, I can't guarantee that. But uh, that's just what I'm gonna do from for probably maybe till mid-season, I guess. So I'm still on the like like Louis T said. I'm still outside. I'm still outside. Yeah, not scared. We not scared. We gonna get it together. We gonna get it together. Ain't running from no smoke. That's about all I had to say. It's nice talking to you, bud. Yes, sir. My boy, I got my boy, Mr. Harrison, saved in now. Yes, sir. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead and keep it rolling. We're going to keep it rolling because we still got like another um, five people in here. Let me go ahead and get my boy, Johnny, from Chicago in the building. How you feeling over there, Johnny? Man, I'm in Chicago. You know, I live in Chicago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. How, how's that feeling over hey, there? Let me Oh, my God, you know these motherfuckers clowning me, man. You know they <laughs> are. At work, I'm on my way to the barbershop. I got to hear this shit in the barbershop. I, I just – but, you know, Rico, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a bad feeling about this game. I, before we even started, mm -hmm. I had a bad feeling about this game. I said, man, when Dick Buck is bad yesterday, I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. They fit to come out, and they fit to light our ass up. And that's exactly <laughs> what they did. That's a, hey, but you know what? You got to get a Bears credit because you know what they did? They looked at that Philadelphia Eagles film on what the Eagles did to them. Mm -hmm, yep. That's exactly mm -hmm. what they did. 
Why is why, you? What, what I don't understand, Rico. I'm not gonna keep you on hold because I know you got a lot of callers. It's three minutes. Why would you pick Forbes and Gonzalez was sitting right there? This it it, it bothers me. What is this man doing, man? What <laughs> Forbes? Christian Gonzalez is sitting right there, and you mean to tell me you pick Forbes because you say he's a ball hawk? Are you serious? <laughs> Christian Gonzalez sitting right in your lap. <laughs> oh, look, hey Rico, I'm gonna tell you something. You gonna think I'm you gonna think I'm lying? If the Falcons blow Washington out next Sunday, they gonna fire Ron Rivera, man. I'm telling you. Hey, if man. this happens, hey you Rico, might be right. If 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 the Falcons score if the Falcons score between thirty to thirty five points and we only score ten to fifteen points, Rico, breaking news: Ron <laughs> Rivera has been relieved of his duties. Rico, you you got to be honest, man. It's time for him to go. It's time for him him and Jack. Why is he still a defensive coordinator? Why, why is he still a defensive coordinator? <laughs> Rico, this is this is bad, man. This is bad. We're not going to the playoffs, Rico. Rico, we're not going to beat the Giants. Daniel Jones going to look like Joe Montana, as usual. We're, we're, we're not yes, going to man. the playoffs. We play, we play Atlanta, the Giants, then Philadelphia. Then I think Miami coming up. Yes, Are you really Miami, serious? Miami, 49ers, the Rams, Cooper right. Cup will be back. It's, but we got to get Cup right. Then they got another dude. They got – Puka. The Rams got another dude yeah. that's catching 15. That boy Puka back. going stupid right now, man. Can't lie. Oh my Puka. God. R- Rico, I, Rico, when is our bat? Week 14? Week 14 is our bat, right? Is it? Oh, my Week Lord. 14. Oh, it's show Liz. It's after the Dolphins game. Woo. Ron Rivera will be fired after that game. <laughs> Take my word for it. I called it. <laughs> after Miami put up 50 on them, after Miami put up well, he better hope Atlanta don't put thirty up on him. But if Miami, if Miami put fifty points on him, <laughs> it's over with. You see what Magic Johnson? You see what Magic Johnson said yesterday, right? Last night after the game. Oh yeah, yeah. He tweeted it out. He was sick. He was sick. He was like, y'all didn't play with heart. None of that. Yeah, Magic Johnson was sick. Yeah, he said, it's, "This is this is unacceptable." Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Th- 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 he got. I, now look, man. I'm gonna let you go, Rico. My last thing. Mm-hmm. After this Falcons game next Sunday, don't be if they even if they lose, bro. I think he gone. I think even if they lose, Rico, I think he's gone, bro. I yeah. really do. Yeah. But I'm gonna let you get back to your college. I'm gonna keep in contact with you next time you have a live stream. I'm gonna keep in contact with you. All right, yes sir, my boy Johnny, yes sir. Uh, all right, all right, Rico. All right, hey. man. Appreciate that, yes sir. Great call, great call, hilarious call, yes sir. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like Rivera. It can, it can, uh, it, it, man, if we lose to the Falcons, especially a certain way we can lose, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I think they're going to try to give him more time, but I mean, he got fired midseason with the Panthers, so anything can happen, man. I would not be surprised. Now we have a 404 number in the building, so that's sounding like Atlanta, somewhere in Georgia at least. Who's this? Uh, this, this Otis, Rico. Yes, sir. Let me say my boy Otis in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good, man? I'm in there. I'm in the ATL with you. I'm a Bulldog fan, just like you. Okay. So okay. I've, I've been so, I've been watching. I wanted to I wanted to support you, man. I got a podcast myself, and yes, uh, I wanted to call in on your show. I want to call in your show? Ye the real. The now they they do have to fire Jack Del Rio and Ron, and I think the main reason is to be honest with you. I don't think they want to coach anymore <laughs> because this, like, no, seriously, they're not that everybody, all your callers, are, they're not making adjustments. I mean, they're not difficult adjustments to make. They're real easy. But for some reason, they're not making the adjustments. And notice he brought Eric B. Enemy in, mm-hmm. made him the assistant head coach. Who was the assistant head coach before EB got there? It was Jack Del Rio. Yo, Jack Del Rio, yep. Now, if you were the defensive coordinator and the assistant head coach, and somebody brings in a new guy, he's going you know, to be the offensive coordinator. We're going to show he can call plays. And you make him 
the uh, assistant head coach, wouldn't that rub you the wrong way? It does. It looks. It does look like a little something at least, because he definitely got demoted. Right. So watch this. But I don't think it rubbed Del Rio the wrong way. So what I'm saying is, I think they were doing EB a solid to bring him in, like everybody's saying, fire those two and make EB the head coach. One of the problems is, as everybody's talked about, which is true, the offensive line. There's nothing wrong with Sam Howell. He's just a, he's just a young guy learning to play the position at the NFL level. The offensive line, as you know, is not giving him enough time. He's starting to look at the rush a little bit, playing a little hero ball. That could be problematic. Yeah. But, like you said, we thought the defense was going to be the strength. The problem with the defense is, Rico, and you've been, you've been watching sports for a very long time in your life yourself. What team can stay in the same defense the whole game and not and not get carved up? Uh, yeah, you got to change. We stay it up. in the same defense. Predictable. We don't change. We don't change up our looks. So all they're doing is running through, and we have players that can't execute a zone. So think about since the time we've been trying to run a zone coverage. Forget who the corners have been. Forget who the safeties have been. Since we've been trying to run zone coverage with Jack Del Rio being here, you know this, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. They're drafting guys to play the style they want to play, but that's not their strength. So that's why you ever notice at every game, what are we looking for? The safety is looking at the corner or the corner is looking at the safety. Oh, they're always blaming each other. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) Correct, because nobody knows what you're doing. So the only remedy to me is this, and I'm going to make you mad, because it's either got to be Eric enemy, right? I'm talking about as the head coach, right? Or I would throw a whole – and I'm going to make you mad, because, like I said, we root for the same team. Or I throw a vote load of money at Kirby Smart. Oh, no. I, I would be sick. I ain't going <laughs> to – I'd be sick. I would be I know. sick. I'd be here's sick, why, man. Here's, here's what – Here's, here's why I say that. If you watch Kirby Smart when he coaches, like I'm saying if you're not going to get a job to Eric B. I'm just only saying if you're not giving the job to Eric B. Mm-hmm. The only reason I say that, if you watch Co- when you watch Georgia, notice when guys are making mistakes, they're not playing up to their potential. You see Kirby do what? He pulls them to the side. This is what's going on. This is what mm-hmm. we got to do. Mm-hmm. This, 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 that, and the other. Yeah, he does that a lot. Our coaching staff, right? The only person on our coaching staff that does that is Eric Bien. That is the only coach that does that. That's why you can see a Sam How do what? Have all those problems at you know the Buffalo game, right? And now you see him doing what? Starting to correct some of those problems because he's got somebody coaching them hard. Yeah. You look at you look at Jack Del Rio. Those guys are just out there. Run is just out there. They're just out there. So what's <laughs> happening while everybody is being uh, frustrated, I'm talking about the fan base, while we're all being frustrated is because you have a head coach that's not trying to make any adjustments. You have a defensive coordinator saying they're not doing what, I'm tr- what I want them to do. So in other words, he's not trying to make no adjustments. He's just saying do it this way. And so – the only progression everyone is seeing is what? The offense. Even though Sam Howe is getting sacked a lot, I'm saying you're seeing his development. We're putting up some points. But the defense is not stopping anyone because you have two guys who the head coach and the defensive coordinator, that's their calling card. They're, they're just out there. They're not, they're not making adjustments to the personnel. So. Yeah. What, what what's going to end up happening is at the end of the season, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone because Magic says, "What you want me to be a part of this ownership? I come to win." That's why he tweeted, "What he put the owner, the uh, uh, Josh Harris." I said this, not let you go. Josh Harris, he just like a lot of other uh, you know owners, just happy to own the team, this, that, and the other. Trust me, Magic Johnson is going to be the one that's in his ear that says, this is what's got to happen. The change has got to happen. 
And only two people is going to survive. Eric B. Enemy and Doug Williams. Why? Because the part owner is a black man and he knows what Doug Williams means to the Washington foot fan base and going to get Eric B. Enemy a shot. That's where it's coming from. But it's not going to happen until the end of the season because it won't make sense to fire anybody since you don't have anybody that can run the defense. That's the only reason they won't, they won't do it. Yeah, but I can see that. I think, just, yeah, I don't know because, I mean, I think Mitchell Tisler pointed out that the only coach on our coaching staff that has any defensive coordinator experience, even to the slightest, I think he said it was Juan Castillo, who's technically our offensive lines coach right now. So, yeah, it's like even if we do fire him, then what? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and people forget, Rico, look who we lost. We got a new offensive line coach. Yeah, Chris Harris gone, our <laughs> DB's coach. Chris, uh-huh. So think about it. Remember we kept trying different offensive linemen out every year, and we still were saying, man, this offensive line is pretty good because it's the offensive line coach we had. We yeah. don't have that offensive line coach. Then, like you said, the defense is back. You had a guy that played defense is back, but guess what? He's not there yet. And think about it. He's not even a defensive coordinator. He's uh, with the Tennessee Titans. He's he's a um, he handles the passing game on the defensive side for the Tennessee Titans. Why did yeah. you let the man walk out the door? Yeah, I mean, it's like a half promotion, but not a big one. Like, yeah, it is crazy that we let him go. For like a slight, slight one step up, half a step. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We keep letting people go that can do the job, but in some of that comes from you know being with Dan, Daniel, uh, Daniel Snyder, yeah. giving Ron, all, and I know Rico, you knew this was going to be a problem when Ron got here, and he gave him all the power. He yeah. gave him all the power. And Bill Belichick, and then we started seeing, it, right? We, hold on, why, just like Belichick, what did he do? You said it earlier. He bargained shots for players. Mm -hmm. And we're not getting impact players. Remember a couple of years ago how pissed you were where uh, we took the linebacker, but we didn't take the safety from Notre Dame? Oh. Impact players. See what I'm saying? Yeah, we don't, my boy Kyle. We don't get impact players. We go, we go drafting guys. That, like you said, we could have got Christian Gonzalez. We, now, we watch this. Dotson is a good player. Taking nothing away from Dotson. But think about have we drafted the guy you wanted, Rico? That's in New Orleans. Oh, you're talking about Chris Olave. Oh, okay. Olave, think about it. Olave, Olave, and and, uh, and and the rest of the receivers. Now, how does that look? See what I'm saying? Yeah. We keep bargain, basement, shopping, just like you said, in the draft. And we do it in the uh, the team next. Uh, I think the next off season. I mean, the next draft. You already know, Rico. The first two picks got to be offensive linemen. Oh yeah, first round gotta at be. the very least. First round is straight offensive line. Like <laughs> Olu Fashanu, Joe All, Amarius Mims. Give me one of them, please. Uh, <laughs> but um, I appreciate the call, though, yeah. Otis, man. My boy, oh, we got all a right, EGA man. fan in the building yeah. in Atlanta, all of that. I know you're going to be tuned oh, yeah. into that game tomorrow at 7 p.m. We whoop Kentucky real quick. Oh, yeah, man. Now, man watch this. When I say this, how does it go? Watch how physical Georgia play tomorrow. Like, get it. Kirby are in the city. Mm hmm. All right, man. Peace. Yes, sir. Oh boy, Otis, yes sir, fellow UGA fan in the building. We have three more callers. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and lock it down too because it's only been three callers for a while anyway. And I said I'll stream for an hour and we're going on to like about an hour 30 before we even bring these guys in. Um, so let me bring on, we got three more callers. I'm going to go ahead and bring my boy Javier in. Shouts out my boy Javier. He's the one that did the big time donation earlier too, so I'm happy that he's calling in. What's good, man? Hey, thank you for taking my call, Rico. I really appreciate it, man. Um, appreciate you, man. Say real quick, I just want to say real quick, I really enjoy your content. Um, kind of new to the live streams, but, man, like the stuff that you do, like all the videos, like that stuff's just awesome, man. So, appreciate um, it. You know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, so, real quick, this isn't really a, you know, a call more about, like, what happened. It's more just about the franchise in general. You know, mm -hmm. I've been a Redskins football team fan, Commanders fan, for as long as I can remember. You know, I live in South Texas now. It's literally Cowboys country. 
Um, everywhere okay. you go, even to a local grocery store, like, you know, gas station, you see Dak Prescott's picture all over the place, like, and stuff like that. Um, you know, but my mom, for some reason or other, you know, she grew up a Washington Redskins fan. Um, she loved George Allen, Joe Gibbs, like their coaching style. And, okay. Um, so yes, she, sir. So she raised me right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Um, you know, but like she got to see players like, you know, Joe Theismann and Daryl Green and all these greats that you've seen in the past. And I, did. Um, I was born in 88. So, I mean, technically they won a Super Bowl during my lifetime, but I've never seen it with my own two eyes. Just what I've seen in highlights or watching old games. Same. Um, you know. The, the thing is that, like, you know, I love this team and I'll root for this team, win or lose, no matter what. But games like yesterday, man, are just so frustrating because it's like just when you think that Washington is going to take that step up, yep. that they're going to turn a corner, they just lay an egg and disappoint. That's year my in, biggest thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not here to call for anybody's head or, or you know, um, talk about schemes. Like, I, I mean, I don't really know too much about that stuff. I don't have that football knowledge like some people do. Um, I just love watching the game and I love my team, but generally something, generally speaking, like something has to be done to turn this team around. You know, I'm hopeful with the new ownership group. I know Josh Harris is kind of lighting it up yesterday, but, um, you know, hopefully that honeymoon phase kind of comes to a close and, you know, once the season winds down to wherever Washington is at that point, you know, they start making some moves and start making some changes. Um, you know, you got to kind of take this loss for what it is. Hopefully they can regroup, rack up some wins, at least make a wild card spot. You know, that's best kind of best case scenario for right now. Yeah. I just think they have too much talent on this team to not to be performing the way they are. Like I paper, agree. You look at this roster, think like, man, these guys should be killing it. And it's just the production's not there for whatever reason. You know, hopefully they kind of regroup next week in Atlanta see what happens there but um you know i can't think of a time that a roster a washington roster has been this stacked maybe 2012 you're talking nine years ago now and yeah. it's it's same thing over and over um but you know i, I want to thank you for taking my call man and uh keep doing what you're doing I, I appreciate everything you do for us as fans and all the content you put out man appreciate that i mean on top of all of that to donate to the channel as well before you even call in man much love man. i appreciate that my boy javier i got you saved in and everything so yes sir thank you sir all right man Take have a good night yes Bye. sir my boy javier in the building next up we got my boy commander lorian and then we're gonna end it with my boy joseph how you doing over there commander lorian how you feeling yeah man <clears throat> pissed off <laughs> uh, you know <clears throat> yeah pretty bad um so just a couple quick things because you know last week i made it a point that it really isn't the players it's coaching but also everybody else that's been upset with sam howell uh it's what his fifth game as a pro and when i look at you know, the other QBs out there, top flight QBs, right, that were just recently drafted. Yeah. Um, how's Bryce Young doing? Whoo! Ho, ho, even worse. Trash. Even Trash. worse. Trash, right? Way worse. 0-4. Oh, 0-4. Oh, oh, Never won the game yet. Um, CJ Stroud, another top flight prospect, right? He started out pretty good. First game, they scored 30, they won. Second game, he scored 37, they won. Yeah, because then scored 20, they lost. Last week, they scored nine, they lost. <laughs> God. <Right>? Um, <laughs> so, it's not the QB. He's a young guy. It's going to take some time. He's going to have ups and downs. He's learning. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're going to be boys running open. You know, he's not seeing right away. <clears throat> and he's taking his lumps, literally. Oh, uh, yeah. Taking his shot. Oh, he's yeah. He's still standing in there. You know what gives me hope, though? Um, not about the season, because, you know, as long as Ron and JDR that are around, it's going to be terrible. Um, we're not going to win anything other than 800, probably eight games, because that's what they do. Um, is that last play, uh, it wasn't the last play, but the, the drive where um, Howell was out there scrambling, trying to get the first down, it must have took like four shots. 
um, yeah. on his way to trying to make it a two, you know, you know, two yards, fourth and two. Yeah, and Ron's dumb ass kicks the field goal. Yeah, that made me mad. Your quarterback is <laughs> the quarterback is out there, literally trying to kill himself with the team, and you reward him with a field goal attempt. Never, the, never mind the two point conversion they they went for this week, twice a week late. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come yep. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> clown. Okay, they're clowns. They're just like the coach Ron Rivera is a clown. And um, the other thing that I wanted to remind everybody of is um, uh, these these set of numbers: one hundred three, ninety six and two, one hundred and three. 96 losses and two ties. Okay. That's Ron Rivera's career record. He as average as it gets, man. As average as it gets. And guess what? Yeah. We got um we got Atlanta next. And if we win, by the grace of God, somehow, <laughs> uh, we stop BJ Ryan. <laughs> Robinson somehow. I don't know who the hell's gonna stop BJ. But um if we figure that out, uh We'll be we'll be five hundred, average, I guess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what it's about. That's what it is, man. Um, <clears throat> it's not the players. You got Forbes in there gets cooked all last week. You put him in again, he gets cooked again. You put and you put you put uh, Delvio's system in any other team, and that defense is going to get cooked. Because it's not complicated. It's very basic. Not only is it basic, um, it's not fooling anybody. They've completely figured out Jack Del Rio's system. Completely. Completely. And that's why they're struggling. And that's why it's just progressively getting worse. They're taking to get any better. It doesn't matter what player you put into a system. If you put them out of position, and if the system isn't set up to cover one another, dumb it's just dumb so <laughs> you know it's just it's just one of those things where it's not going to change until magic johnson changes it because uh he was mad that boy was mad like last josh night. Harris. yeah you know, he's pissed yeah yeah he's gonna put him on notice josh harris is the money man you know he's the money he's gonna count his money he's gonna have a good time and i don't be glad him having a good time and that's why he has magic there he has magic there because magic's going to bend his ear and say, hey, this ain't it. And these are the changes that need to happen. And these are the dudes that need to go. So Magic Johnson, um, you know, shot one across the bow um, last night. <clears throat> and uh, that was an embarrassment. That was an embarrassment to the entire franchise, the entire fan base. It was a slap in everybody's face. And for Ron to continue with that nonsense and say, I didn't talk to anybody I didn't say anything to the players during halftime. Yeah, that was weird. And the fact that your players come out flat. The, yeah. The fact that the players come out flat, that's about that's a reflection of the coach. Because the coach is flat. The coach is flat. He's flat on the sidelines. You don't know what he's thinking. You don't know what he's saying. You don't know what, who he's coaching and if he's saying anything to the players to correct the behavior or the way that they're playing. Right? If you put Forbes in and you're saying, well, you know, he's got issues with his technique and he's not doing what we're teaching him, the minute you see him not correct that, why you even put him in the game? <laughs> You're the head coach. You get to choose. It's his, it's his choice, right? He can yeah. go to Jack and say, Jack, pull that fool. Pull him. He's not ready. It's as simple as that. So I don't blame the players that one bit. Um, and, you know, what the tell was, if you saw the locker room uh, interview with uh, uh, with uh, Terry um, Sweat, Oh, Smart says Swiss. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Tez says that the cat out the bag. You know, he said we came out flat as F. And everybody needs to do their job, right? Mm -hmm. And there are guys out here doing their own thing. He literally said that. <laughs> uh, and, then he, and he followed that up with I guess we just, you know, we, we thought that uh, we underestimated them. He, and those are his words. You know, that's and terrible. And so, you look at the frustration on the players. The players know, you know. Um, and you look at Chase Young's interview. 
Doc in, in um, after game uh, interview. He's too busy drinking his water. He does not want to be there. He does not want to answer questions. Um, all he wants to say is we got to play faster. No shit. You know, four yeah. years and we can still we still come out slow. That's again, that's Ron. That's Ron and JDR. So I just think everybody needs to understand from the offensive side. It's a new system, right? Um, the 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 receivers, um, everybody on the offense is still figuring out exactly all of those details. It's a brand new, complicated system, mm-hmm. but it is yielding results. And Sam is young; he's going to grow. He's going to have good games. He's going to have bad games. Yeah. Um, he still put up twenty. He's back to getting lumped, and he's still putting up twenty. <laughs> right. But the defense ain't stopping nobody, so it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Need to continue to progress. Continue to grow. I would challenge people that are, um, you know, ready to give up on Sam is look at his contemporaries. Look at the the, 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 the top QB. Look at the top young QBs that were just drafted, you know, and playing. Um, And he's only got one more game on them than they're doing. He's still got a better record than them. So, you know, I would just say give everybody the option to relax with the offense. The offense is going to grow. It's different than what we've seen in the past. Because in the past, Ron's philosophy is 1982. Run, 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 run. Well, guess what? <laughs> EB tried that this week, and it didn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? It didn't work. <laughs> it put us behind. It gave us two, three, and out. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, EB got to be EB. EB got to be himself. He got to be what he feels comfortable calling um, and knows what works. Ain't nobody in our organization to be telling EB squat. EB got rings. What we got? Jack shit. <laughs> so That's a good he, 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 we should tell him to go F off period don't come <laughs> over here don't come over here why don't you go figure out how to, to stop somebody and I'll figure out how to score points right <laughs> so you know that's just my mindset on it I'm done with those clowns I don't I, like, we're not gonna do nothing we're not gonna win nothing big we're gonna win the game we're gonna lose the game we're gonna win the game we're gonna lose the game and it'll be like that for you know the whole year until they get fired but I hope Magic gives um gives EV a shot and gives him a chance. Uh, I think they should fire him, fire those clowns now, um, and make or you know what, fire JDR and force Ron to call the plays. He can call the plays. <laughs> he can call the defense, right? He was a defensive coordinator. He can figure it out. Guess who had to do that this um recently in Atlanta? Dan Quinn, right? Yeah. When the Falcons are struggling, Dan yeah. Quinn's like, I'm gonna have to call the plays. I'm gonna have to be closer to what's going on in the defense, you know, and and uh, and, and take over that job. And that was the last job he had as head coach, you know. But look what he's doing in Dallas, right? Yep. So unlike Michael, um, as a D coordinator, he got he's killing it. Yeah, he's killing everybody out there. So he knows how to do the job. But that's what I would do. I would get ready, JDR, just to set the precedent, um, and 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 put and put uh, Ron on notice and tell him you're calling the defense now. Um, and letting them know you're that much. That's another warning shot, you know, um, to let them know new sheriff in town, the ownership ain't playing. We're not going to be getting embarrassed. Losing is one thing, but getting embarrassed is a whole other thing. And that's, that's not acceptable. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. But yeah, man, I appreciate that, Commander Lorian. That's a good, yeah, that was like embarrassing. That, first of all, who we lost to was already bad. And then the way we lost to them at home, terrible. But man, I appreciate that, Commander Lorian, man. Oh. I appreciate that. Hell yeah. Last one is, uh, do you know who's going to get fired? Logan Paulson. Logan Paulson was on 106.7, the fan talking about there's really no scenario where the commanders could lose to the Bears and it not be embarrassing. Those were his words. That's not aging too well right now. <laughs> yeah, right? It was embarrassing. You know I mean? and <laughs> it was embarrassing. One thing about on, it, man. it was that. <laughs> <laughs> it was exactly that. Um, and uh, yeah, I replied to their, uh, I left the chat um, or we can comment on their uh, on their YouTube stream. Um, and I simply said, as I like, um, Logan Paulson is exactly, you can tell that Logan Paulson's never won a Super Bowl with the Washington organization. Because to, to give that comment is a loser's men. it's like it's a loser's mentality. It's the being okay with being close mindset. Um, and that's an acceptance of losing, of not being cutthroat, killer instinct, 
uh, coming out for the next. Chicago came for our head, you know, and yeah. uh, and, and and the fan base deserves scouts. That's who we were back in the day. Um, yeah. I know Joe Joe Gibbs wouldn't stand for that. So um, you know, I think that's what we got to get back to, and hopefully the the ownership group sees it, takes action at some point in the near future, or else we're just going to be suffering a long season, man. Yeah, they they well, they better get it together now. We got to win that Falcons game. You can't beat the Falcons. I don't know how you expect to beat the 49ers, Dolphins, Eagles, Cowboys, a lot of these teams out here. But, man, I appreciate that, Commander Lloyd. appreciate that big time, yep. my boy. From Atlanta, too. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Hell yeah, man. I'll see you at the game, all right? All right, yes, sir. All right, bro. All right, my boy. Yes, sir. And then we got the final caller. We got my boy, Joseph. And before you even ask, you already asked in the chat. But, yes, I already seen the 1094. What's good, my boy, Joseph? What's good with you, bro? Yes, sir. How you feeling? Yeah, so, um, hey, good news and bad news. So, uh, the good news is DJ Moe was in my fantasy. So, uh, he, oh. he had like 49 points for me. Congratulations. And, um, the bad news is Congratulations. Uh, the the commander's defense was also in my fantasy, and Ooh, they got me five. negative one. Oh, so, okay, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that I'm still going to win my fantasy, but that, that negative one really, really, really hurt me. Uh, Daniel Forbes. He's a rookie. He's a rookie. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, he's no he's no soft gardener, basically. Yeah, he's not. No. So, so he's obviously gonna make rookie mistakes, and uh, I just say that this all season he has to bulk up, like at least gain up to uh, two thirty, like. Gain a lot of he he has to go through like a Giannis Antetokounmpo type transformation. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, he used to be like really skinny, terrible, raw, couldn't do nothing right. It, it, exactly, that that's the, that's the type of transformation that we need from Emmanuel Forbes. Like at the end of the day, he needs to he needs to look like fresh two point uh, uh, and. Uh, Sam Howell, he did he did pretty good. He threw he threw for almost four hundred yards. Yeah. So he did pretty good. Uh, I think that the the deep ball to Diami it was not really on uh, Sam Howell because he literally put that on the money. It was on Diami for not like running toward it because he knew. Sam Howell knew that Diami had the speed to get it, but Diami jumped too early, basically. And that's what uh, caused that to not be a touchdown. Uh, the underthrows to Terry, understandable, but that was a that was a pass interference. I, I would have called it a pass interference. The ref worked us at our own house. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy the, to call uh, it on the field and then pick it up. Like so that's wild because we yeah. never get that. We never get flag on the field. This is what they call, and without a challenge, they just pick it up. I don't know when we started yeah. when that started happening. It's, 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 it's just wild. It's just wild. Like like Josh Harris needs to do a better job paying off the rest of something. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, the 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 uh, what is it the the Chase Young sack, that Chase Young sack that that was supposed to be uh uh intentional grounding. Oh yeah, Justin Fields. Justin man. Fields? Yeah, that was that, weird. That was a come on now. That was weird. That was an intentional grounding. He just threw it anywhere. That was, that was an intentional grounding. <laughs> Literally just threw it anywhere. Exactly. Chase Young should have had a sack and a half. Chase Young did play very good. Uh um, who else played good? Montez Sweat played good. Montez Sweat has a sack, uh, a sack and a half. He's he's doing pretty good this year. Mm-hmm. So both of them are gonna get paid this year. Uh, Jack Del Rio needs to be fired like next week, if not last week, uh, because <laughs> this man is like, like why is he throwing plays that? How, why would you put Chase Young? 
in the backfield. Like, what what is he doing there? He's supposed to be pressuring the quarterback. Oh, yeah, in the Eagles game. How is he pressuring the quarterback in the backfield? Down. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, what's – so, Chase, Jack, Jack needs to be fired. We need to uh, bring in Jabril Cox. I don't even know why we didn't sign Tremaine Edmonds in the beginning instead of uh, signing Cody Barton. We could have signed a big-name player like Tremaine Edmonds, and he's still young. He's like 23. Bargain been shopping. Bargain been shopping. <laughs> this is Discount, Ma. But uh, or, or we could have just kept Cole Holcomb. I mean, Cole Holcomb's doing well for the Steelers. So, yeah, but but the, the the Cody Barton is 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 very slow. We could we could at least keep Jamin Davis in like the mic because he's doing pretty good in like the wheel or whatever he's, role he's playing right now. But like Cody Barton, Cody Barton needs to go. Put in <laughs> Khalil Huxman or. Cody Bring Barton's making pop. only. Cole Holcomb's only making two point five million dollars per year more than Cody Barton. That's actually crazy. I would definitely pay that extra two point five mil to get Cole Holcomb back, please. <laughs> Bring me Cole Holcomb back. We missed that mullet. So, uh, the Terry McLaurin, he needs to get more, more, more throw, thrown at him. He's the Cooper Cup of our offense. Why don't we throw the ball to him? We don't act like it. Five targets after passing the ball 55 times in a row, um, starting through the midway of the second quarter. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Logan Thomas would have had two touchdowns, but he dropped one. Yeah. The, the the other one near the end zone. The but but he did but he redeemed himself with the with the jumping like 18 extra yards. For the first down. Oh yeah, when he dove that, for that it. Jump was, yeah. That that Superman that Superman jump was insane. Uh I'm surprised that he didn't get cuffed in that play. So uh yeah, that there are a lot of plays that we did that we could have improved on. Uh but I'm just happy that uh I guess it's a learning experience. Every I game hope is so. a learning experience. I hope they learn. <laughs> I uh, hope they learn from this. I know. I know that we are tired of losing, and so we're gonna get this ten days rest, and hopefully, when we play the team that you hate the most, uh, yep, Falcons. Yep, can't stand them. They're gonna prove. To you, why they're still your team? Uh, so <laughs> that's that's basically uh, what what I have to say. All right, uh, appreciate yeah. that, Joseph. So, uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, how did you uh, think about the One Piece chapter? Oh, I loved it, man. I don't want to dive into spoilers without, or nothing, spoilers. but. I'm excited. I'm more yeah. excited that we're not. We don't get a break this next week too. We go. We coming right back with another one. So I was excited about that exactly. too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But yeah, man. I appreciate that, Joseph. All right. All right, man. You take care. Catch you, man. Appreciate the call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. So yeah, man. That's the end of the stream i appreciate everybody that called in of course man always so much fun especially the rants i love a lot of the points that y'all brought um so man i just i hope that at the end of that falcons game it's a celebration live stream and not a sad one like tonight even though even when we lose at least it's gonna be funny especially with a lot of y'all in the chat a lot of y'all calling in shouts out to everybody that donated man big shouts out to everybody that donated tonight man really appreciate y'all my boy javier donated the most but that doesn't mean that i'm not gonna shout out everybody that donated let me go ahead and go back my boy calvin my boy larry my boy ladero appreciate all y'all for donating tonight man i really appreciate y'all to the dollar sign rico scores catch up also leave a like on the way out i'd really appreciate that because that's big time even if you can't donate you can leave a like before you dip up out of the stream i really appreciate 
appreciate it. And man, um, I'm trying to go to that Falcons game, so I won't be able to live stream during it. But I'm gonna try to have a post game live stream either after the game when I get home or maybe the next day. But either way, we're gonna do a call in show again sometime next week, but it may just be on Monday instead of Sunday. Um, hopefully, again, that's a celebration live stream. And stay tuned because I'm gonna keep watching this uh, Bears game over and over and try to look for ways that we can improve. Because instead of just complaining as a fan, I figure I could just take it upon myself to watch the game and try to, you know, hopefully help the commanders in some way. Um, so I'm definitely going to try to work on that. Yeah, my boy Command Center, we definitely got to get something going. Um, and then, yeah, man, I appreciate all y'all. Again, leave a like on the way out, and I will catch y'all throughout the rest of this week and starting next week with more videos, and I'll catch y'all with a live stream at the very latest next Monday after the Falcons game for a post-game live stream. Um, appreciate all y'all in the chat. Appreciate all y'all that called in. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.